I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. When a man's that polite, it usually means he ain't letting on the whole truth about himself, and I intend to do a little investigating. Daddy. I got the feeling that Duke ain't got a cent to his name. I suspicion he's just married you for our money, and that's just what I intend to find out. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Our hot number is 1130, and we may have a hot number for you. A lottery ticket number, that is. It's the WNEW $25,000 lottery game. To play, all we need is your name, address, and phone number. Then if we announce your name on the air any weekday between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., you win $100 worth of slot machine lottery tickets from the Empire Stakes game. You don't even have to hear it. But if you do and call our hot number phone line within 30 minutes, we'll double the number of scratchable tickets to $200 worth. You could also be one of our five grand prize winners when the lottery game is over to receive $1,000 worth of the new Olympic lottery tickets. It's easy, and we could announce your name soon if you send it to the WNEW Lottery Game, Box 1130, Grand Central Station, New York. Scratch a hot number, and it could pay off for you from our hot number, 1130. Oh, here Quiet in the studio, Latherpuss Radio Spot, take one. Here in the romantic South Seas, Latherpuss Shaving Cream is preferred by uh, more... Mr. Director. God, yes, Mr. Latherpuss. I'm not crazy about this island thing. Uh, uh, see, rough and rugged is what my shaving cream is really all I'll about. I'll change it, take two. Fine. Here in romantic horsefly Texas, Latherpuss Shaving... I hate shaving. to be a bother. What now? But Latherpuss is so continental and stuff, could the announcer... Uh... I'll uh, change it, take three. Yes. Here in romantic horse flag Texas. You know, no. what? if he could use a sexier voice... Sexy, Harry, take four. Here in romantic horse flag Texas, uh, leather good. push shaving cream is preferred two to one. Yes, wonderful. Hope I didn't make too many suggestions. Not at all. Could I make a suggestion? What is it? Could he do it in Swedish with an Irish brogue and add some bagos and a race... Radio. You can do anything you want. Go anywhere you want and reach anybody you want at a price that won't bust your budget. Radio. It's right on the button. A message from the Radio Advertising Bureau. This is Lorne Green. San Francisco has had a strange and colorful history. Under early Spanish rule, it had been a peaceful place of stately Arcadian simplicity, where people gave no thought to locking their doors. Then gold was discovered, and the barren hills of Chaparral and Scrub Oak became the sites for elegant mansions, while the valleys filled up with a teeming, low-life society of gamblers and cutthroats who preyed on the innocent and unsuspecting. Socially, the town was a free-for-all. Eventually, an elegant society developed which was based on the amount of money one had emerged with from the scramble. But always there was the threat of violence. One man, it is said, carried his valuables in sealed, stamped envelopes so he could drop them in a post box if he were set upon. It was not a society where people questioned each other's origins too closely. And as a result, the town always had its share of con men. The year is 1885. We're in the mansion of one Harry Penrod. Harry came west as a miner, but soon discovered there was more profit in business. He has amassed a fortune that has permitted him to ape the customs, if not the manners, of the best Eastern society. And one of the customs he has followed is that of sending his daughter, Gertie, on a grand tour of Europe. It's a move he'll live to regret. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Duke of Nevers, by Percy Granger. 
Our stars, Lynn Berman, Ann Given, and True Boardman. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer, inviting you to the Sears Spring Home Appliance Sale. Come celebrate spring and save from $20 to $100 on selected Sears major home appliances. Save big on washers, dryers, ranges, and microwave ovens, refrigerators and dishwashers, sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, color TVs, and stereos. Celebrate spring. Save at Sears now. Sale ends April 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available in most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $68 on a set of four Sears Road Handler radial tires. That's great savings on Sears Best steel belted radials. And save on steady riders. Sears Best heavy duty shocks. The ones even Joey Chitwood's stunt team didn't wear out in a whole season. Now only $9.99 each. You save over 20%. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're fitting fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them free washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. San Francisco in the 1880s, abundant wealth, and that attracts all sorts, those who would share it and those who would take it. But the story is better told from the point of view of Joseph Martin, district attorney for San Francisco from 1883 to 1889. During my tenure as district attorney, a number of memorable cases came before me, but none was so strange as the one I'm about to relate. It began in the home of Harry Penrod, a successful businessman in our community, with the arrival of a letter. Harry. Oh, Harry, look, here's a letter from Gertie. Well, high time. Uh, what's the postmark? Well, it's from New York. Do you suppose that means she's back in this country? Well, what else could it mean? Open it. Even so, she's still clear across the continent, still a week's train ride. Well, well, what does she say? Did she enjoy Europe? Is she all right? Oh, Oh! What is it? She's gotten married. What? Uh, let me see that. To Charles Jules Francoise. The foreigner? Well, what else would you meet in Europe? Well, she says he's an aristocrat, a duke. A duke? Yeah, the Duke of Nevers. Harry, that means our Gertie's a duchess. Uh, don't be ridiculous. She's barely an adult. <laughs> duke of Nevers. I'll bet... What's the matter? I don't want you rushing out telling all our friends about this. Not until we've at least met the fella. Why, Harry, whatever makes you think I'd do a thing like that? She's inherited your independent streak, all right. First insisting she'd be allowed to travel without an escort, and now without so much as a word of warning, she returns with some ne'er-do-well in tow. Think what it will mean to our position in society. I've taken care of our position in society with diligence and sound business principles. Oh, but a duke, Harry... It's the man who makes the title, not the title who makes the man. There's plenty of impoverished European noblemen who trade on a long string of impressive titles to worm their way into wealthy circles over here. I'll reserve judgment until I've met him. Good day, sir. May I help you? My name is Charles-Jules François de Nevers. Oh, yes, sir. We, we've been expecting you. Uh, welcome to the Parker House, San Francisco's finest hotel. Uh, we've got the bridal suite all ready for you. Bridal suite? But uh, how did you know? I mentioned nothing about that in my telegram. I told them, Charles. I sent them a telegram, too. Oh. I wanted us to have the best suite in the hotel. Oh. You're not angry, are you? Not at all. <laughs> So, American girls really are famous for taking the initiative. I'll have one of the boys show you right up. But... Thank you. You know, word of your arrival has been spreading around town like wildfire. You've already got quite a few calling cards and invitations. We have? Oh, Charles, isn't it just too wonderful? Mother must have accidentally let it slip out that we were returning. 
You're going to meet all the very best people in San Francisco. I'm looking forward to it. Shall I have the calling card sent up to your room? Oh, there will be time for all that later. Our first visit must be to my wife's parents. <laughs> My baby. Oh, I should say my little girl since you're married now. Oh, Mother, I'm so happy to be back. I had such a wonderful time. Daddy. Young lady, I think you have some explaining to do. Now, Daddy, don't be angry with me. Say something nice. Well, uh, are you all in one piece? <laughs> yes. And uh, you, you must be the Duke of Nevers. Nevers. Charles-Jules François de Nevers. Uh huh. Oh, please, we can't keep the Duke standing in the hallway. Let's all go into the parlor. Mrs. Penrod, I insist you call me Charles. Oh, uh, dear, I I'll try. Gertie has told me a great deal about both of you. And you've come anyway. How nice. Whatever she's told you, it's more than she's told us. About you, I mean. Oh, Daddy. No, my dear, your father is absolutely within his rights to wish to know something about the man who has spirited away his only daughter. Sir, I am the eldest son of the late Oscar Audin, Duc de Nevers. I was born in Paris, and I graduated from the Collège Louis-le-Grand, where I took a course of science and letters. I held a commission in the French army, which I've only recently resigned. Uh, this is a copy of my military record. As you can see, it was written out by the Minister of War of the French Republic himself. I see that. A wounded in the Sudan, made a Knight of the Garter and a Knight of the Legion of Honor. Wounded at Dahomey and now is a commander of the Legion of Honor. Show them the medal, Charles, please. Oh, oh it's beautiful. Looks pretty authentic. That's the one thing of which Charles is most proud. Here's a photograph of my family. My sister here is married to Prince Henry of Aremberg in Belgium, and my brother is an officer of artillery stationed in Madagascar. And this is our family seat, the Chateau de Nevers. It's like a palace from a fairy tale. Very nice. Uh, assuming it isn't in receivership. Daddy! My mother is living there at present. I think Daddy's just jealous. Charles's family can trace their ancestry back to Charlemagne. So? We have a little royal of our own right here in San Francisco. Really? Yeah. You ever hear of uh, Norton the First? No, I don't believe I have. Harry. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm surprised someone in your line of work hasn't heard of him. Old Norton was the emperor of the United States and the protector of Mexico. He published at least three proclamations a week, which he put up in the free lunch counters. Had a regular uniform and everything. Sword, cane. Went about town with a couple of mutts named Bummer and Lazarus. Uh, kept an eye on things. Charles, Daddy's joking with you. Norton the First was just a harmless old crazy man. Everyone humored him. But I, I don't understand, Mr. Penrod. How did he get his titles? Simple. He, he made them up. Harry, don't be a bore. But he is absolutely right, Mrs. Penrod. That is precisely how titles come into being. It is only time which confers on them any significance. Well, I think it's shameful that we're treating the Duke as if he were on trial. Please, Charles, come with me. I'll show you the rest of the house. I'd be delighted. Mrs. Penrod seemed to be doing no more than her social duty in rescuing Charles from her querulous husband. But had anyone cared to notice, as she slipped her arm through the arm of her gallant son-in-law, she gave him a cool and appraising look. love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. 
wear them in Alaska, in Texas, in Maine. Wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears tough skins. The toughest jeans in Sears tough jeans territory. Fashioned from a permafrost tri-blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears tough skins in boys and girls sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish, too. You have tough kids, Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. Let's try some word association. In. Out. Top. Bottom. Paint. House. What? Oh, the whole house needs painting. Hmm. On. Off. That's it. Sears $4 off paint sale on each gallon of interior fashion flat, semi-gloss, and ceiling paint, plus exterior flat house paint. I'll uplift my home and my spirits by painting new life inside and out. Hard. Easy. They're one coat paints when used as directed. And now, $4 off. Sale ends April 21st at most Sears retail stores. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. As we continue our story, Mrs. Penrod is leading her aristocratic son-in-law farther and farther out of earshot of her husband and daughter. Mrs. Penrod appeared to be pointing out the various knickknackeries around the house. But as she made small talk, a plan was hatching in the back of her mind. Your arrival has caused quite a stir, I'm afraid. All San Francisco's waiting to meet you. And I am most anxious to meet them. Actually, Duke, I did have an ulterior motive for wanting to speak to you alone. I have a proposal I want to put to you. Put to me? My father died recently. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, he was an old coot. But he left me a lot of money that's just been sitting in the bank, and I've been looking around for a good investment. Uh, can't your husband advise you? I want to find something on my own. So when Gertie told me she'd married a Frenchman, it gave me the most marvelous idea. Yes? Well, who ever heard of a Frenchman who didn't know about wine? Who oh, indeed. Uh, but I don't understand. Duke, I have a confession to make. There is still one or two small but vital ways in which our city is not yet a civilized place. Do you know, for example, that we have no single importer of French wines? Oh, but surely you must. I mean, no knowledgeable importer. One who knows a good grape when he sees one, if you take my meaning. The riffraff drink gin cocktails and brandy smashers. They don't care. But the best people are desperate for the fine vintage wines of Europe. Oh, they would pay anything. Are you asking my opinion of such a venture? No. I'm asking your partnership. Partnership? Oh, I, I could handle the business side of it. Every American woman knows about such things. But when it comes to knowing what wines to import, oh, goodness, I wouldn't know the real goods from snake oil. Uh, and you want me to purchase the wines in Europe? Oh, think of the angle from the private cellars of the Duke of Nevers and uh, Nevers. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but I must tell you that as a gentleman, I never dabble in business. You wouldn't have to put up a cent. I'll give you enough money to go to Europe and buy out the lot. I'm sorry. I would be happy to advise you on your choices, but I could not act as your agent. Charles! Char oh, there you are. I just looked at the time. If we're going to the opera tonight, we should get back to the hotel. <laughs> Oh, good day, Mrs. Penrod. Uh, welcome to the Parker House. Yes, my son-in-law is staying here. Uh, yes, ma'am, the Duke of Nevers. Nevers. Uh, quite a figure he cuts, too. I wish to leave something for him in the safe deposit box. Oh, certainly. We'll uh, put it uh, right in the safe and see that he gets the key. Thank you. Now, I'll fill out this receipt if you'll just tell me the contents of that package. Money. Money? Uh, how much? A great deal. Uh, this is for the Duke? Yes. He doesn't know it yet, but I want him to realize I'm serious when I say that I've made up my mind he and I are going into business together. You wanted to see me, Daddy? Uh, yes, Gertie. Have a seat. Where's Mother? She said she was going downtown on some errand. I didn't ask her what. But what I want to talk to you about is... Uh, Charles, and what I want to know is how he makes his living. I don't know. You never asked. I just assume. Never that... assume anything. Just because he's a duke don't mean a thing. How does he pay for things? Well, he never seems to have to pay for much. Well, why not? People always seem to give him things. He never asks them to. They just offer. We're always being asked to dine that out. That and... settles it. Settles what? 
Yoo-hoo, I'm home. Well, there's your mother now. Huh? Good morning. Why, hello, Gertie. We were just discussing the Duke. I was telling Gertie in plain terms, I don't like his stripe. Well, why ever not? I think he's perfectly charming. He's a little too charming, if you ask me. I don't like it. I don't trust it. When a man's that polite, it usually means he ain't letting on the whole truth about himself, and I intend to do a little investigating. Daddy! I got the feeling that Duke ain't got a cent to his name. I suspicion he's just married you for our money, and that's just what I intend to find out. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Carefully focus on your appliance cords and plugs. Check to see if they're damaged in any way. And if so, discontinue using the appliance. Next, you should focus on water. Check so that none of your plugged-in electrical appliances can be accidentally immersed in water or any other liquid. And avoid handling an electrical appliance with wet hands or when you are standing on a wet or damp floor. And finally, your safety scan should include checking for the UL label on all electrical appliances. That label indicates that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Is your car equipped to handle emergencies? Well, here's a list of essential items which will enable you to better handle an emergency situation. A car jack and lug wrench should always be carried in case of a flat tire. Be sure you know how the jack operates and the correct procedure for changing a tire. Flares and reflectors provide warning to other motorists that your car is stopped and both are essential safety items. A tow strap or chain enables a car to be pulled out of the mud or the snow. Battery jumper cables help a motorist solve a dead battery problem quickly. A small fire extinguisher can prevent a small problem from turning into a large one. But you'd better keep it in the passenger compartment where you can get to it quickly. A first aid kit can come in handy in all sorts of minor medical emergencies. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Lorne Green again. And now San Francisco District Attorney Martin continues his story. Harry Penrod followed through with his threat to hire private detectives to look into the financial standing of the elegant duke who had married his daughter. But as things were to turn out, he never had to wait for their report. Events moved far faster than anyone would have imagined. What a splendid vista, my dear. I really think there's no closer approximation of paradise than your beautiful San Francisco Bay. I thought it would be such fun to bring you here. I thought my parents would be so happy. Aren't they? I seem to have won your mother over quite completely. You have, but it's Daddy. Ah, well, no man is ever happy to see his daughter leave him. It's more than jealousy, Charles. Oh? Well, oh, this is just so awful. When I went to see him this morning, he said he was going to hire a private detective. <laughs> well, what on earth for? To look into your financial background. Daddy's obsessed with finances. My financial background? Ah, he suspects I'm one of those impoverished European noblemen who attaches himself to rich and gullible American women. I'm sorry, Charles. Ah, oh, please, don't even think about it. I would never embarrass you or your father by making a public issue of it. There's more to it than that. Daddy's a very powerful man. He's got connections. Connections? What does that mean? He has influence. He knows powerful people. When he doesn't like someone, he has ways of hurting them. You think I am in danger? I think for your own safety, we should... Well, maybe go back to Europe earlier than we planned. No, Gertie, I will not even consider such a thing. Why not? It would be an insult to your father. I would as much as be saying that I did not trust him. But you don't. Of course I do. Well, you shouldn't. 
Gertie, gentlemen live by certain rules of behavior, and one of those rules is that we must assume other gentlemen will abide by those rules. You don't understand, Charles. That's the way things are done in Europe, but it doesn't work that way here. I must assume your father is a gentleman, and until he should demonstrate to the contrary, I must trust that he will not conduct himself in anything less than an honorable fashion. <laughs> I guess Europeans must like to walk, because the Duke did a lot of it while he was in San Francisco. That same afternoon, he went out again, only this time alone. Good afternoon, Duke. Are you going out again? Yes, I thought I'd have a brief stroll alone before dressing for the opera. Oh, have we received any mail? No, but uh, there's a lot more calling cards. It seems like everyone who is anyone wants to wine and dine, you and Madame de Nevers. Uh, Madame de Nevers. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, Duke, there is something I couldn't tell you before with your wife around, you know, mm -hmm. but... Mrs. Penrod came by this morning, and she deposited quite a large sum of money in a safe deposit box for you. Money? Are you sure? Yes, yes. She said it was for some business arrangement the two of you were planning. And... Oh, I see. She's a very persistent woman. <laughs> anyway, here's the key. Any time you want to withdraw it, you just come see me or the manager. <laughs> I don't understand where he could be, Mother. He's not in the habit of keeping you waiting, is he? That doesn't seem very much like him. It's not. He said he was just going out for a walk, but that he'd be back in time to dress for the opera. Oh, well, obviously, the two of you can't continue to live here, the Parker House. Charles refuses to consider imposing on you and Daddy. Gracious, that's not what I was leading up to at all. It's time the two of you thought about finding a home of your own. Mother... Charles and I aren't going to be staying. You're not? This is just a visit. I wanted him to meet you and Daddy. But after that, we're going to return to Europe. Oh. You mean live there permanently? I thought you realized. Well, of course, he has that splendid chateau. It's far better than anything we have to offer. You live with his mother, then. Mother, I'm sorry. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. But we have our own lives to lead. Oh, no, no. No, I understand. If he's a commander of the Legion of Honor and all those other things, he must be terribly much in demand. So, then, how long can you stay here? I don't know. Charles has been rather vague about that. Oh, I do wish he'd get back. I hope he hasn't wandered into one of the rough areas of town down by the docks. What if something's happened to him? But nothing has oh. happened to me. As you can see, I'm perfectly all right. Charles, I was so worried about you. Forgive me. I was unavoidably detained by a most unfortunate incident. Good day, Mrs. Penrod. Uh, good day, Charles. What happened? Well, as I was on my way back to the hotel, I saw a policeman in the act of arresting a young couple on some trivial charge. I took the liberty of inquiring with all due civility what the trouble was. The policeman was quite rude. He told me to mind my own business. You didn't get into trouble, did you? Not at all. I was able to get the whole affair settled without the slightest difficulty. Oh, really? What did you do? The only thing a man of honor could do. I posted their bail. How noble. There, you see, Harry was completely wrong about you. I had no choice. The policeman with his rudeness had challenged me. And you put up the money to set them free. I had no money with me. What did you do? Our family owned some property here in San Francisco, a house. Oh, really? I put it up as collateral. But these people, do you know anything about them? If they don't show up in court to answer the charges against them, you'll lose your house. Well, I think you behaved splendidly. I don't understand. Why didn't you tell me you own property here? Oh, gracious. <laughs> Who could that be? Yes? Uh, are you Charles Jules Francois, the Duke of Nevers? Heavens, a policeman. Yes, officer, I am the Duke of Nevers. At your service. Uh. Officer, what's happened? Why, excuse me, miss, but uh, I got orders to bring this gentleman down to the station house. Whatever for? Well, he's under arrest. Arrest? What for? For making a false statement to the police in the matter of ownership of a certain piece of property which he offered as collateral for a bond. I'm sure there's been some mistake. Well, if there is, we'll straighten it out in the district attorney's office. Daddy, 
Daddy must be behind this. <laughs> Why, why, Gertie, what are you doing home? I thought you were going to the opera tonight. Is, is something wrong? Charles has been arrested. Well, what for? They said he signed over some property that didn't belong to him. I want to know what all this means. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to hear the details. I mean, is this your doing? Gertie, I haven't the faintest idea what the Sam Hill you're talking about. You didn't arrange to have Charles arrested on false charges? No. You know I don't trust the fella, but I never thought he was a criminal. Oh, dear. Think of the scandal. Think. Just think of the scandal. Charles is innocent. I'm sure there's some awful mix-up. Even so, the very taint of arrest. It puts such a bad face on things. Here's the district attorney's office. And here's where I come in. The first I personally ever heard of Charles Jules Francois, the Duc de Nevers, was from the lips of a breathless and very beautiful young girl, all a-tremble with indignation, and I thought fear. So you see, sir, my husband couldn't have possibly done such a thing. It doesn't even make sense. I agree, but I've spoken to the arresting officer and I have the arrest report here before me. It all seems to be in perfect order. Then send for Charles. I'm sure he can explain everything. When I laid eyes on the Duke of Nevers, as most Americans called him, I was confused. He was tall, distinguished, with an excellent cut to his clothes, obviously a man of breeding and refinement. I, I had to keep reminding myself that he was a prisoner. <clears throat> uh, please, uh, have a seat, Mr. de Nevers. Thank you. Cigarette? Thank you, I uh, don't smoke. Uh, now, uh, maybe you can get us to the bottom of what we hope is a regrettable error. May I speak confidentially? Sir, I have suffered great humiliation at my arrest. I am an officer and a gentleman of France. Were my family to be aware of my present situation, they would never recover from the disgrace. Well, I, I don't think we can keep it out of the press, but if you can clear the matter up now, it will minimize the damage. Of course, it has all been a most awful mistake. No. You're charged with making a false statement to the police? Yes. Is that true? Of course not. Is this your signature? It is. You knowingly swore to this document, stating you owned this piece of property? I did. But the property isn't owned by you. I have the deed right here. It belongs to uh, Mr. Garrett Thompson. Oh, heavens. We know the Thompsons. Yes. Well, that's both perjury and fraud. You'll have to answer to the charges unless there's something you haven't told me. As you wish. Your passport says you're French. That is correct, though recently I resigned my commission in the French army. Well, all your papers seem to be in order. But if you can offer no further explanation, we'll have to hold you for trial. Heavens. Mother, what is it? My money. What money? I sent a large sum of money over to the Parker it house. It is perfectly safe, Mrs. Penrod. What if Harry was right after all? What if he's made off with it? Mother, he's right here. The money is where you left it. I have not touched it, nor did I ever intend to do so. How can I believe you? Mother. If you wish to see for yourself, Mrs. Penrod, here is the key. Mrs. Penrod flew out of my office in a cloud of petticoats and feathers. The Duke spoke at great length about his several careers and his travels. He, he discoursed knowledgeably on literature. He spoke of a number of inventions he'd made. And the more he talked, the more I wondered how such an extraordinary person could permit himself to be charged with perjury. But since he'd say no more about it, I had no choice but to have him escorted back to his cell. That left me the task of consoling the distraught Mrs. de Nevers and waiting for the next developments in a case that echoes in my mind even today. Why, after just a few laundrings, my fashion t-shirts look all out of shape. Not so with Sanford Knit Fabric T-shirt tops from Sears. They're 100% cotton, cool and comfortable, and treated with a process that helps these garments keep their shape, even when machine dried. So your fashion dollar keeps its shape, too. Sanford Knit tops in Mrs. Sizes are Sears' best. 
And this spring, when color is headlining fashion news, you'll be thrilled at the choice of rainbow colors. <sighs> a good night's sleep. That's important to you. How your mattress is constructed should be important, too. Sears Best Imperial Elite Mattress has mattress within a mattress construction. The inner spring model has individually pocketed coils covered with polyester and urethane. The polymeric foam model has individually molded comfort islands for even support. Only at Sears. Sears Best Imperial Elite. A mattress within a mattress. Super Plus. Wrap yourself in the luxury of Sears. Super Plus. Bath towels. Just one touch will tell you they're super thick and luxurious. With more combed cotton terry loops per square inch than any other towel we sell. Each towel weighs over a pound. They're Sears largest terry bath towels. Super thick and absorbent. No wonder they're called Super Plus. Available now in brilliant solids or patterns. At most larger Sears retail stores. again, and here's the concluding act of the Duke of Nevers. I stepped out of my office to save the Duke's young wife the embarrassment of my presence in her distress. I motioned to my assistant, Jake. Yeah? What is it, Counselor? Apparently, Mr. de Nevers' last address was London. I want you to cable the London police and see if they have anything on him. Why? What makes you think they would? I don't. But we might as well check with them. Sure thing, Counselor. I'll send a cable straight off. When I returned to my office, I found the young Mrs. de Nevers had brought herself under control. In fact, she arose with such dignity that I fancied some of the Duke's manners had rubbed off on her, and she for the first time had become aware of the title she held by marriage. But before she could leave, her mother unexpectedly re-entered my office. Mr. Martin! Oh, Gertie, you're still here. Yes, Mother, but I was just leaving. No, no, not just a minute. I have the most extraordinary news. I've just been to the Parker house. The money I left for the Duke is still there, every cent of it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. How could I have jumped to such horrid conclusions about him? Surely now you can let him go. I'm afraid he isn't charged with theft of your money, Mrs. Penrod, but with perjury. But doesn't this prove he's innocent? It doesn't answer the charge against him. I must say, though, it leaves me very puzzled as to the motive for his actions. He's an educated man. Certainly must have known what the consequences would be. You don't suppose. Oh, gracious. What, Mother? Well, what if he's not quite right in the head? Mother! Well, we all admit it was a crazy thing for him to do. I know he seems perfectly nice, and I'm sure it isn't his fault. But I have heard that European nobility is fond of, uh, well, marrying amongst themselves, if you take my meaning. And we know what excessive inbreeding can do to one's character. Mother, that's outrageous! Perhaps the Duke will see fit to enlighten us at his hearing. There's going to be a hearing. There'll have to be, in a week's time. In the following week, the press had a field day. Duke, dupes, cops, went the headlines. Then one day, my assistant burst into my office. Afternoon, Counselor. Hello, Jake. What have you got there? Well, it's from the London police. Concerning the Duke of Nevers? Of all the pious frauds, cast your eye on this. It's an arrest record. That's right. False pretense, fraudulently obtaining a carriage for which he had not sufficient funds. No, so he's not only a perjurer, but an ex-con. What in the world is the man up to? I don't know about that London incident, but the one here seems pretty clear. He figured to get in good with that couple he bailed out and take money from him later. No, if extortion was his racket, why didn't he just skip town with Mrs. Penrod's money when he had the chance? Well, then, what is his game? I haven't the faintest idea. But I did have an idea. Faint to be sure, but an idea nonetheless. That evening I had dinner at my club. My thoughts kept returning to the Duke de Nevers. I'd never met anyone more fitted to be a Duke than he. I'd felt myself in the presence of a truly superior being as we talked, a, a cultivated citizen of the world. His arrest record didn't make sense. I retired to the club library and fetched down a copy of the LaRousse Encyclopedia, Volume N. There it was. Nevers, capital of the department of Nevers. 
ducal palace built in 1475, sold to the Cardinal Mazarin, 1659, who left it to his nephew, who in turn left it to, and, and so on, until, until what I had expected to find, I found. But still, the shock was so great, I left the club quickly and returned to my house. The following morning, the court convened to hear the case of the state versus Charles Jules Francois Duc de Nevers on the charge of perjury. The public scene Mrs. Penrod had hoped to avoid must have been a nightmare to her. The court was packed. The facts of the case were quickly put into record. And then, as Mr. Penrod rose to take the stand as a character witness for his son-in-law, I felt I could withhold my information no longer. To save the poor man undue embarrassment, I rose to speak. <clears throat> if it please the court, I feel obliged at this time to acquaint it with certain facts that came to my attention last night. Does it have a bearing on the case? I think it does, Your Honor. You uh, only think? You don't know, Counselor? I'm sure it must, but in what exact way, I can't be certain. The line from which the Duke claims to be descended is a distinguished line that includes cardinals, generals, and statesmen. But unfortunately, it is also a line which has been extinct for over 100 years. How do you like that? He's not only a perjurer and an ex-con, he's a, a, an imposter. <laughs> My announcement had an effect I hadn't anticipated. The court was immediately adjourned in the utmost confusion until the following day when sentence would be passed. How could anyone have made up a lie in such detail? The Duke had letters of introduction, official documents seemingly bearing all the correct seals, medals, photographs. Why? What drove him? That evening, he had a single visitor to his cell. My dear Gertie, I'm sorry you must see me in these surroundings. Why? The humiliation. I mean, why did you deceive me? I don't understand what has happened. Oh, Charles, you deceived everyone. All my friends, my parents. The whole town opened its arms to you. I can only offer my apologies for the embarrassment I have caused you. Why? What is the reason? It was bad enough you fooled us. But then why did you go and tell the police you owned that house? It was my duty as a gentleman. I had no other choice. But you must have known it would lead to your ruin. It was my duty as a gentleman. But what was the reason? Are you wanted for some other crime? Have you done something worse that I don't know about? No. I don't understand, Charles. Who are you? If behaving like a gentleman means so much to you, then why have you deceived me? I love you, Charles, and you've made me miserable. I'm sorry. You talk about acting honorably, and you've been honorable to everyone but me. For all I know, you aren't even French. I am French. How can I believe you? Please don't ask me to say any more. I'm your wife. I love you. I was born in Paris... I knew my parents in name only, never by any affection they showed me. I was allowed, uh, I was driven to make my way as best I could in the streets. I slept under bridges, ate scraps. I was no better than a neglected animal. Charles. Enough, that is all past now. Charles, listen. My father has begun to take steps to have our marriage annulled. He says he can do it because you married me under false pretenses, but I can stop him. No, he is right. That is exactly what I did. But we can go away someplace together. Better to let your father know the marriage. The only crime you've committed is perjury, and they can't give you a very heavy sentence for that. I can wait. No. Why not? Because you asked me to tell you too much. When Gertie left the Duke's cell, she didn't say a word, nor did she ever speak of what passed between them that evening. 
The following morning, the court was packed with all the city society folks, all buzzing with curiosity about the mysterious Charles Jules Francois. And not just a little vindictive in their desire to watch the final humiliation of the man who had so completely deceived them. So much did poor Mrs. Penrod's distress grow with the entrance of each of her social rivals. But finally, she could bear it no longer. It had to be escorted to a small chamber to be revived with smelling salts. It's too bad that she did, for she missed the final chapter of this extraordinary tale. The judge's sentence was extremely harsh. Five years at hard labor. I watched the defendant closely. He did not flinch. He stood with his shoulders thrown back and head erect, as befitted a scion of a noble house. And then, before adjourning the court, the judge turned to him and asked the question that was on everyone's lips. You stand before us a convicted felon, by your acts, if not by your confession. You have chosen not to tell the court why you laid yourself open to certain arrest and conviction, or why you did not make off with the money that was offered you. You are a convicted criminal and a proven imposter. Will you at least be so good as to tell us who you really are? The prisoner bowed slightly and spoke with great dignity. Certainly. I am Charles-Jules Francois, Duc de Nevers, and a commander of the Legion of Honor. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save 36 to $68 on a set of four Sears Road Handler radial tires. That's great savings on Sears Best steel belted radials. And save on steady riders. Sears Best heavy-duty shocks. The ones even Joey Chitwood stunt team didn't wear out in a whole season. Now only $9.99 each. You save over 20%. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Shop where America shops with a Sears credit card. You'll be able to choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services at everyday low prices. Just say, charge it. At Sears, it's satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. So visit your Sears store today to apply for your credit card. Or just phone toll-free 800-526-0444. Find out why Sears is where America shops for value. Remember, phone 800-526-0444. In New Jersey, residents call 800-652-2777. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Duke of Nevers was written by Percy Granger, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Len Berman, Ann Given, and True Boardman. Also heard were Virginia Gregg, Howard Culver, and Vic Perrin. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs> Yeah, that was about two weeks after Dad had his stroke. Did he have high blood pressure? Don't know. He's doing a little better now, but he can't speak too well. Has trouble walking too, doesn't he? Yeah, it's truly a shame. You have high blood pressure? I don't know. I feel okay. I'm not high strung like Dad. Whether you're high strung or low strung, whether you feel just fine or not, has nothing to do with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a major risk factor in stroke and heart attack, but it has no obvious symptoms. It can only be detected by a simple, quick, and painless test. The American Heart Association also wants you to know that black Americans, as a group, are more likely to have high blood pressure than whites. We don't know why. 
but high blood pressure can usually be controlled if it's detected. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. What in the World Happened in April, brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. April is Admissions Day for Maryland, admitted in 1788 as our 7th state, and Louisiana, admitted in 1812 as our 18th state. George Washington was sworn in as our first president in April of 1789, and the first U.S. Congress began regular sessions at Federal Hall in New York City. In April of 1860, the first Pony Express run was made from Missouri to California in 10 days. The motto, In God We Trust, was first stamped on all U.S. coins in April of 1864. The Navy's first submarine, the USS Holland, was commissioned in April of 1900. Navy Commander Robert E. Peary and Matthew Henson reached the North Pole in April of 1909. What in the World Happened in April is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter who will answer your questions about Navy opportunity. Or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000, toll free. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. <laughs>